Fisher folk are very concerned about the future of one of Barbados's most renowned fishing communities. Businesses dying at Tent Bay, St. Joseph, and many fishermen there are losing hope. Shane City has a story. Fishing at Tent Bay is, is, is a dying um, situation now. This is Michael Carter, just in from his latest fishing trip, a few days off the waters at Tent Bay. His catch today includes red snappers, cavallis, and amberfish. Now, Mr. Carter has been a fisherman all his life and at 81 years of age has seen Tent Bay in its glory days, which he says are long gone. Well, Tent Bay actually is gone to nothing now. So we had to tell you that maybe for these fishing boats there at Tent Bay. And right now we never had a market, but now we only got three or four boats we got a market. So things are uh, improving, it's it decreasing. You won't find fish vendors or hawkers as they are better known here in Tent Bay now. Only these men who enjoy a life of fishing. If you get fish now and you don't got um, customers to get rid of you, you got to take care of yourself. You in the way, fish? Mondays are normally the busiest days. That's when the fish come in and the boats are hauled ashore. This tractor only comes once a week, which limits the amount of fishing time. One time when we had our own tractor, we could have stayed all year. But now we have to wait on a tractor from Bridgetown. So uh, any boat coming now and getting a little difficulty. By the time the tractor reach out here, well, you know, you got a total wreck. A lot of people will reinvest in boats, but it's just to reinvest in a boat now and you gotta come back to these, you gotta come into these conditions. It ain't easy. Now what Melvin and other fishermen have been telling me is that they want the authorities to take another look at the area, probably redevelop it, building a harbor to allow their boats to come in into much safer and more calm waters. Both men tell me that the future for Tent Bay as a fishing community doesn't look bright at all. No young people ain't coming in. What do you think they're not interested in fishing? Well, that's, um, I can't tell you that, but maybe the set other ways again and see different the fishing. Because fishing really is an easy job. Most people know I really want to go into fishing, but it's good. And if you look at it, fish is a tasty meal and somebody got to catch it. Now, I tried to talk to some of the other fishermen and boat builders here about the situation. Most of them declined comment, saying that they are tired of talking and they want some kind of action from the authorities to breathe new life into this Tent Bay fishing community. I'm Shane Seeley for CBC News. Meanwhile, local fish vendors are being told they have to restore confidence in the industry if they want to see an increase in sales. Bruno Nichols, head of Barnufo, the Barbados National Union of Fisherfolk Organizations, says recent concerns about fish quality following reports of poor handling and storage have put a dent in sales, particularly at the Bridgetown and Barinda Cox markets. Though not given a definitive number, Ms. Nichols says the fall-off is significant. She says members of the organization are responding with a series of training initiatives that will bring uniformity and professionalism to the sector. Ms. Nichols says the matter has gone beyond the shores of Barbados. This situation is not just a national issue, it's a regional issue, and it does not really say, you know, speak well for the industry of itself, and certainly it don't speak well for the country. So this is a situation that has to be dealt with, not only at the fisher port level, but it also has to be dealt with at the government level, because clearly this is a, a growing industry, unlike what some people think and I don't think enough attention is being paid to the fact that the industry is growing and if an industry is growing this market was not built for the type of activity that is going on here today so clearly we know that the industry is growing and if it is growing then we should have infrastructure put in place to accommodate the growth. A fitting tribute to the island's fisher folk, particularly those in the southern fishing village at Oystens in Christchurch. Their hard work over the years was recognized and celebrated during a special tribute at the Berinda Cox Fish Market last evening. We hear more from Kishmar Sinjus. Whether it's a hobby or livelihood, these nation builders were saluted for their contribution to Barbados over the years. 
songs were sung and poems read, all in tribute to the fisher folk at Oystings. The event was organized by the Barbados National Union of Fisher Folk Organizations, the Christchurch South Constituency Council, and the Oystings Development Trust. A plaque was also unveiled bearing the names of fishermen lost at sea. Flowers were later laid for each of the 12 men on that plaque. Chairman of the Christchurch South Constituency Council, Canon Austin Carrington, believes the work of these fishers shouldn't go unnoticed. We recognize the importance of this aspect of our economic activity. We pray that God will continue to bestow his blessings upon this uh, body of persons and he will continue to grant them prosperity and keep them safe in their work. And President of Barnufo, Vernal Nichols, says fishermen risk their lives every day and despite the many challenges facing the industry, their efforts contribute millions to the island's GDP and healthy eating. She says the date September 22nd holds special significance in the history of Barbados. Miss Nichols wants that date to be considered as one of joint significance. To Fisher Four and to the many persons who perished in Hurricane Janet, the worst natural disaster in the living memory of Barbadians. To this effect, Barnufa will seek permission to replicate such a memorial as this at, other, at another landing site as there are other fishermen from various sites who have lost their life at sea and should be remembered in a similar way. Kishmar Sanjus, CBC News. Student interest in mathematics has peaked since the People's Cathedral embraced the Conquer Maths program. Both the principal, Ken White Burke, and IT coordinator and teacher, Peter Farnham, say students are now more eager to do their mathematics classwork and homework. When a CBC team visited the Bishop's Court Hill St. Michael Institution, class three students were hard at work in the computer lab. They shared with us just what they like about Conquer Maths. I like Conquer Maths because it is fun and it explains my work when I'm like doing my percentages and decimals. It explains it a lot. Mr. Farnham introduced me to Conquer Maths, so it helped me better with my work. I like Conquer Maths because it explains everything well and it helps me in areas that I don't understand, like decimals, but it really helped me improve in those areas. I like Conquer Maths because before my math marks were low, but now my math marks have increased. The school also received a donation from Conquer Maths. Managing Director of Conquer Maths Barbados, Winston Comerbatch, says that school is currently leading the way in terms of enrollment to the program. He says the program is important given the recent concerns raised about poor mathematics performances. Based on the persons who have used the program, uh, we have been getting some very um, successful re results. Individuals are seeing improvements in their work and the teachers are seeing a greater level of satisfaction as they deliver the content and the students are excited about the program. So we believe that once students utilize the program, which offers tuition from reception right up to tertiary level and gives everyone the opportunity to go back as far as they need to build on weaknesses. And the visiting managing director of Conquer Maths UK, Richard Hunter, welcomed the efforts by the island to introduce the program in schools. He says it is designed to correct deficiencies before they become more serious. I've been um, quite heartened to see in Conquer Maths so many eager faces who really want to learn. Um, I've I visited a, a lot of schools in my time and it's very, very unusual to see this, this kind of attitude in children. So I feel that Conquer Maths combined with new technology is, is going to be extremely successful in, in Barbados, perhaps more so than, than other countries in the world. Over 150 trees have been pruned and trimmed in parks and high traffic areas island-wide. This was revealed during the National Arbor Day celebrations at the National Conservation Commission. General Manager Keith Neblett said this is a safety measure taken by the NCC. We have a, a, a kind of pilot project going on with lime and it's not necessarily just extended just to lime where we have about nine of our sites where we have free Wi-Fi. So if you go on King George V Park, Barclays, Folkestone, Enterprise, the Boardwalk, Bats, not Bats, Bath, Bashi Bay, Oyster Bay Gardens, we have a project where those persons who have the gadgets can go in and certainly have access. 
Mr. Nebbett says there is a serious problem of termites and drainage at Drill Hall, which destroys the root system of trees, some of which are 30 to 40 years old. The initiative has been to identify and care for the aging and termite-infested trees across the island, but also of concern are those aged trees on private properties that are dangerous. Three people were injured, one of them seriously in a two-car smash-up that occurred around midday along Salters in St. George. The driver of one of the vehicles, 20-year-old Kamal Boudou of Warners Park, sustained a broken leg and was rushed to surgery. Fire officials were called in to help remove the passengers from the vehicles. Also injured were 19-year-old Shamara Scott of Briar Hall and 17-year-old Matthew Small of Maxwell, both in Christchurch. They were taken to the QEH by ambulance and treated for their injuries. The other car was driven by Marvin Bristol, 30, of Kingsland Christchurch. The road has since reopened to vehicular traffic after initially being blocked as a result of the accident. There is a misconception that issues related to HIV and AIDS do not have anything to do with the aging or the elderly. This is according to Minister of Social Care, Constituency Empowerment and Community Development, Steve Blackett. He made the comments at the start of a drama presentation entitled Take Warning, Granny's Say on HIV and Sex. The production took place at the Convermere School Hall and was spearheaded by the Ministry of Social Care and the National Assistance Board along with the Barbados Association of Retired Persons. Some persons may ask the question, why this focus on HIV AIDS and the elderly since the misconception that HIV AIDS doesn't have anything to do with the elderly or the old. However, nothing could be further from the truth. According to a 2008 online article by the Dover Press, and I quote, while HIV infection is commonly thought to, be, to affect younger adults, they are an increasing number of patients over 50 living with HIV. Mr. Blackett also lauded the use of drama to get the message across. The use of drama to educate the elderly has been having a positive effect, and many seniors have been using the information gained to share with their grandchildren, their nieces, their nephews, and other relatives and friends, thus contributing to the necessary spread of accurate information on the disease, which in turn assists us in meeting our objectives in the area of public sensitization, which trends towards behavior change. The Barbados Youth Service will play an essential role in empowering young Barbadians. This suggestion comes from Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Youth, Ruth Blackman. At the time, she was delivering the opening remarks at the graduation ceremony for the 2012 to 2013 Barbados Youth Service Residential Program. She says the program is essential to youth development. Therefore, her ministry has been actively reviewing the structure of the 22-year-old program. ...has been solicited and received from its management, and the minister will be making the relevant presentation to cabinet in due course. What I can say here is that the Barbados Youth Service will be benefiting from the synergies being created at the level of programming between the ministry and its various agencies. More private sector agencies should assist the Barbados Youth Service and its job attachment program. This plea was made by the director of the Youth Service, Hallie Haynes, who was also speaking during the program's graduation. The director said he was vigorously securing attachments for many of its participants. He says the Youth Service only managed to secure 32 attachments, seven of which were from the private sector. I want to use this occasion to again make a special appeal to both the public sector and the pri private sector that participating in job attachment and apprenticeship programs is much more than the stipends that European trainees are paid. It is about giving young people that opportunity to participate in job training which can shape their minds, their character, and indeed their attitudes and aptitudes to the job market. Tourism is our business. That statement, according to Monsignor Vincent of the St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Church, is not only relative to players in the tourism industry, but should be embraced by the church. According to Monsignor Vincent, people travel in their numbers to the holy city and the various shrines across the globe. He says there's a rich history attached to his church and people are eager to embark on pilgrimages. And he says the Catholic Church is ready to welcome them. We have here a treasure 
a treasure in Barbados that we as Catholics treasure, but that others would like to know about and appreciate. 